Africa Lost Stories, Neil Kagram here with Ian Butcher. Ian, thank you very much for your time today. No problem at all, Neil. No problem. So Ian's going to give us a batting masterclass today. Before we get into it, Ian, can you just talk through your career? Leicestershire and Gloucestershire top batsman. Leicestershire and Gloucestershire, yeah, opening, uh, opening batter. Mainly, mainly at Leicester, had three years at Gloucester, uh, then sort of retired from the, from the game after that. Knees started uh, playing up. Uh, but mainly at Leicester, yeah, had uh, had nine, ten good years there. Um, what were your career highlights there? Uh, career highlights: winning the Benson Hedges Cup in '85, uh, beat Essex at Lords, um, scoring 100 at, at Lords, which was uh, which is always uh, always nice against Middlesex, obviously, and uh, and then 100 against the '84 West Indians. Uh, and with the highlights. And obviously, you've come from a, a cricketing background, yeah. brother and nephew playing for England. Yeah, um, yeah. Alan whole, and Mark. Uh, everybody. It's in yeah, the blood. Yeah, it's in the blood. My middle brother also was on the MCC ground staff, uh, and so uh, yeah, it seemed to seem to run in the family. Uh, had to play really, otherwise I'd have been left on the sidelines on my own, sort of uh, twiddling my thumbs. So, so how did that come about? Was it kind of like a family influence? Uh, not really. I think it just sort of. Um, I think Alan, obviously, is the older brother. He he got into the game and 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 liked it, and from from there on in, you know, Martin and I had to follow really. So and and for some reason, there doesn't seem to be sort of anything going back in the family history to suggest that that, that, that cricket would be something that we'd be we'd be good at. Um, but um, it, it just seemed to seem to flow from there. Yeah. And then Mark, obviously, your nephew played yeah. seventy odd Test matches. Seventy nine, I think, played yeah seventy nine Test matches. His younger brother Gary as well was on uh, was on the Surrey staff and Glamorgan staff and won a couple of championships uh, with them. So uh, yeah, again, it was just it was just a big uh, big family affair really. And then I've read that you actually had some experience down in Australia. How was that? Well, my, my parents were the original £10 pond, so we emigrated out to Adelaide in 64, so I was about two. So I don't remember too much about it, um, but we spent five years out there, and I think that that's where Alan really honed his cricketing skills out there um, in those conditions. And, and, and again, Martin and I, as the younger brother, sort of followed and started getting involved with, with, our, with our, uh, respect, our respective schools. So. And post your playing career, uh, tell me through your like coaching. Yeah, so when I finished playing, I joined the. I was in the fire service for about 15 years, um, based up in rugby. Um, and then during that time, Northants had just built their new indoor centre, um, and I started doing some coaching there with the academy and emerging players program with David Capel, David Ripley. Um, and then moved down to London and started, and then set up my my coaching company, Butch for Cricket, um, which more or less is, is is tends to deal with on one to one basis or very small groups. Um, so that's that's how the how the coaching came about. Perfect. Now let's just get into the to the masterclass. Mm -hmm. As you said, so when you're kind of looking to open the batting, mm -hmm. what is your mindset going into it just before you even go out to the wicket? I think the first thing you've got to look at as an opening batter is your, your role in the side is, is, to, is to get through that new ball, is to see off the two opening bowlers. They're, the, they're gen, gen, uh, generally the quickest and also the balls at its hardest. So you have to, you have to try and protect your, your more sort of uh, stroke playing uh, players, if, uh, stroke playing teammates, if you like. Um, and so the, 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 that is basically your mindset when you first go in. Now, you're going to have your areas where you're going to probably look to score, but, but that, is going to be, that is going to be dictated by how, A, how the pitch is playing and B, how the bowlers, how the bowlers bowl at you. And, um, you know, there's a lot been said in the last couple of years, in England particularly. Mm -hmm. I know Alistair Cook has said himself that the last two years, um, opening the batting has been... Um, the most difficult that it has been. In your opinion, why is that the case? Is it I think, the deep ball? Yeah, I think the way that the championship is, uh, the county championship is played now, it's, you, 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 have a, you have a section at the beginning of the season and then a, then a section at the end of the season. That's where predominantly the, 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 uh, the, the, the four day game is played. And because of that, you have, got, you have got the pitch conditions to deal with. So early on in the season, you've got the green ones and you know, sort of coming out of the winter and they could, they, they'll swing and and then gradually as the season wears on and you get the back end of the summer, then you, you start getting dry wickets, which turn a little bit as well, or turn quite a lot. So 
actually being an opening batter in those situations, especially the first part of the summer, is, is very difficult. Um, you know, with, with, the, with the batting conditions, the green pitches, it, it does, become, does become quite a, quite a difficult, uh, difficult task. And do you reckon the quality of bowlers improved as well? Or is it just uh, conditions? It's I think conditions are, are more to do with it. I, it I, if I go back to, to when I played in, in, in the 80s and opening batting in the 80s, I think you're going to you're going to struggle to find a, a, you know, a, a better sort of bowling lineup throughout the counties than than, than you had than you had then. Um, every side had at least two overseas quicks, um, and they were people that were in that current test test side obviously less international cricket was being played then so they were able to give their time to give their whole sort of six six months to a particular county unless their country was was actually touring at the time so so i think that i think nowadays it's more down to conditions and when when the championship is played as opposed to as opposed to the bowlers and who's the best you best you faced ah oh, i mean there, there there were so many but you you probably don't have to go too much past Malcolm Marshall, as, uh, who, who's uh, played for Hampshire for many, many years. As, as, as Quickest. The best. He was up there as well, uh, but then you have to, then you go look, Sylvester Clark, um, Holding, although Holding was probably coming towards the end of his, end of his career there. Uh, Patrick Patterson, Wayne Daniel, I'm probably forgetting some, but they were all, they were all pretty much of a muchness, all, all pretty quick. Okay, come on, let's walk down to the wicket. Okay. So you open the batting, yep. and obviously the first thing that every batsman does is take guard. Hmm. What is your kind of um, strategy as, as such in terms of taking guard? Would you look at who's on at the moment, or do you have one in your mind already that you feel comfortable with? I think... If any, any youngster, um, what would your advice be? Generally, the reason, the, the reason we take guard is, is, is so that we know at any given time when the bowler bowls where we are um, in the crease. And the other thing that's really important about it is knowing where this little fella is, the, the off stump. So if we, if we take a guard, doesn't matter whether it's leg stump, two or middle, once we've made that mark and we either put our bat or our feet on it, we have a really good idea where that off stump is. And the reason why that's so important is that so we know that, that especially when you're opening the, uh, opening the batting, we don't want to be playing at any balls that we don't have to, unless they're scorable. So they've got slips, they've got, they've got catches everywhere. So we want to know that anything that's outside our headline here, that we can leave if, if necessary. So that is, that is why the, the, the guard is, is so important. Where you put that guard is very much down to each individual's preference. Although it would appear that the way things are going now, more and more people are sort of going across their stumps a little bit more and maybe taking middle, sometimes middle, uh, middle and off um, to, be, to be across and in line with the ball. So that's why, that's why it's, a, it's, an important, it's an important part of, the, part of the batting strategy. And you said like more batsmen are going across, but is that, more, is that fair to say more in the four day game? Um, when you look at the advent of one day cricket, are batsmen going more leg side? And is that something that you'd encourage us to give think, that freedom yeah, of arm? Possibly. I, I think that the, the, the one thing that you don't want to, especially in, especially in white ball cricket, you, you don't want to give the bowler any clues. So there's no reason at all why, even if you're looking to target offside, why you still can't be batting across your stumps and then you make that movement as and when you see fit as the bowler just about, just about to bowl or, or whatever. If we start here, if we start on leg stump or outside leg stump, it's, it's, it's giving a real big clue to the bowler that that's where you're looking to try and hit it. And then he might be able to sort of spear it in here a little bit more. So, so it's, it's one of those things that, um, it, again, as, as, as I said before, going back into white ball cricket, um, you don't want to give clues away too early about where you're looking to target. And um, as you said, you've come out to bat as an opener. Is the mindset defensive or attacking i know you need to be positive in your footwork yeah but is it more survival or is it you're looking to score Again, it at every opportunity on the individual, really i mean if you look at say someone who who, who, who he wasn't playing out someone like verenda Sayway, there was no way he was going to go out and play in a defensive mode he was going to take the new ball on whatever in in test match cricket um I, it, it is very much down to the individual. Myself, I, I, was, I tended to be, I knew my scoring areas, and I tended to be a little bit more defensive. Um, I wasn't, 
I wasn't a player that, that, that hooked or pulled very, very often. So I had to find other ways of scoring. And I used to try and get myself across my crease a fair bit in order, even if the ball was short, in order to get across and try and play the ball into the leg side or get on top of it and run it. Very rarely was there a third man in place. So there was a lot of area down there that you could, you could get away. And also, you probably only had three, three fielders on the leg side. So you'd have a fine leg, you'd have a short leg, and then you'd have a wide mid-on, which was invariably the, the, uh, the field position that you had. Um, and so there was a lot of area to score there. So, and also at that time, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't a huge amount of balls pitched up in, in your half with, with, with some of the bowlers. Obviously, someone like Richard Hadley used to try and get the ball up there and swinging, so you, you looked to play a little bit more offside with him. But there was a lot of, lot of balls that you were playing off the back foot. And in, you know, I, I tried to get across so, as far as I could to, in order to try and work the ball into those areas and pick up my ones and twos and rotate, rotate the strike. I say for a youngster, obviously, like when they're growing up, the pace isn't always there. So you do get a, a lot of balls pitched up. But as you go through the levels um, and you get into men's cricket, mm -hmm. they do get a lot, of, lot more short deliveries. Yeah. Um, as a coach yourself now, how would you kind of, what's the best advice you'd give? I think it becomes, it becomes apparent when a player is beginning to need the ability to play off the back foot. And one of the things I find with youngsters when they're first learning to do that is, isn't the actual movement or playing of the shot, it's the judgment of the length. And, and, and that, that is something which you have to work on quite a, quite a lot to get them to understand what lengths you play back to, what lengths are good lengths, which the bowlers obviously trying to hit that good length to get you confused as to whether you should be playing forward or back. And then you get your four balls that they're, they're used to that they can play forward to. So once, once they start beginning to get the concept of, of length and bounce, then you start getting into the movement and start playing the back foot shots that uh, they're, they're going to need as they, as they get older. But it's just, a, it's just a matter as a coach of looking at that player, looking at the bowlers he's facing and thinking to yourself, right, he now needs a back foot game in order to go up, go up a notch. And do you want to give us a quick demo of like the different back foot shots? Yeah, yeah, I, I can do. I mean, obviously we'll start, we'll start with the sort of the, the first one, the defensive one. The one thing that I will get, uh, get youngsters to do is to make sure that they're not just going back because a lot of them will just go there on the back foot and then they're playing out in front of themselves and leaving, leaving these guys open. So one thing I will do is make sure they get back and across. The other thing that's doing is getting, getting heading line. And that makes it a lot easier to pick up that length that I was talking about earlier. And it also makes it easier to pick up line and what the ball's doing. Um, and then you just get in there, first of all, some underarm fees with tennis balls, get them in there playing, playing off the back foot, maybe defensive shot. Then go a bit wider and then get the more attacking shots on the back foot, back foot drive, either flowing or punching. Um, and then you can get into the, the more fun ones and start tennis balls into the sort of chest and head area and get them playing hook shots. Um, just going through the whole, the whole thing, really. And there's also a lot being said about, especially in England, about playing late. Yep. What kind of advice would you give to youngsters again in terms of... You know, it's so, mindset. so important to play as late. It's not just not just in England. Although having said that, you know, with the with the swinging ball, but even if you haven't got, even if you're in a in a, uh, in, in a condition that isn't swinging, just playing the ball as late as you possibly can is is um, is, is paramount. Really, um, and there's some there's some drills that I that I do. What I tr what I try and get the the, the the players to understand is hitting the ball from underneath their head here, rather than playing out in front here and and. That's again quite difficult because some of the younger younger guys they're strength wise they're not they're, they're just developing strength wise and what they will try and do is is try and play sort of their, their check drives but out in front because they're trying to they're trying to hit the ball as hard as they can because they want to score runs but then the concept of, of letting the ball get underneath their head then has to be has to be taught and they have to feel that difference when they let the ball get get underneath them. Get the you know, and get the more the, the power that comes from that is something that they have to they have to learn. So it's not just about playing individual shots. It's about getting that feel and getting that understanding of, of hitting the ball from underneath your head and, and, and hitting it later. And then you've negated the fast bowlers, and then the spinner comes on. 
Yep. How does the mindset switch? It's, again, I... You've got more fielders around the bats. Yeah. And you bit of rough make, and wear. You have audible. to make the running as well. Um, but you would hope that, as an opening batter, by the time the spinner comes on, unless it's getting into the, the second innings, or your second innings, the, the spinner isn't going to be on for some time. So you, you, you would probably be thinking of having batted for at least 10, 11, maybe 12 overs. Uh, before a, a spinner was even thought about. So hopefully by that stage your feet are going, you're, you, you know, you, you've got a few runs on the board, you're beginning to settle down a little bit and your confidence is there. Um, but again, playing the ball late and playing, I get, the, get, get my youngsters to think about playing with, with softer hands, not hard hands out in front of you, but letting the ball come underneath your head again so that you can use your hands to manipulate the ball into areas. Again, it's all about rotation. Fast bowlers, you want to rotate because you don't want to be stuck down this end against a top quick bowler for over after over because that's, that's not fun. Again, spinner, if he's turning it, when someone like Shane Warne was bowling, again, you, you, you just didn't want to be stuck down here because you knew he was working you out and you knew he had a plan to try and get you out. So, that, so the, the more you could rotate the strike, the harder it, it became for him, even though you know, world-class bowler, obviously, the harder it became to him to actually put his plans into action if you were swapping over with your with your partner up there. And then just say, let's give it a scenario. Say you have the great Shane Warm bowling at you, spinning the ball away from you as a right-hander. Yeah. Or say if you've got a lefty uh, spinning the ball away from you, what guard and would you take? And uh, what would your scoring areas be for you yourself? Guard wouldn't change, I don't think, unless the ball was turning, turning really big. I don't think my guard would change too much because because Someone like him had the ability to bowl two or three different different deliveries. Although his his, his wrong and probably wasn't used as much towards the end of his career because of his, because of shoulder injuries. Very very difficult. I mean, as as that's why he was one of the one of the greatest bowlers in the world. Doesn't matter whether it's spin or or, or pace. Um, but scoring areas, you'd, you'd you'd want to be looking for the one that was pitched up. Uh, where you might be able to might be able to drive, but you've got to be so you've got to really be careful. I, I don't mind admitting when I played, we had very few leg spinners. One or two I probably faced in my career. So I, there's no way I'm going to stand here and talk about picking a leg spinner because I, a I didn't have to, and, and b I didn't have the opportunity to learn how to do that. So I, I always, if I did uh, play a leg spinner, I try to play him off the pitch. Now if I tried to do that to Shane Warne, I wouldn't last very long. So you do have to try and read what he's, what he's trying to do. And how um, easy is that? I know we're talking about the greatest bowler there, but yeah. say you're, you're every other uh, spinner out there, um, a lot is said about picking it from the hand. Yeah. Um, to, the, to the layman, it do, that doesn't sound that straightforward, but as a batsman yourself? I think I, I, it's not straightforward. And, and some how do you say, coach that? Is that something you just have to really watch I, I think that's I, I think that's very difficult, and, and I think you I think you're right. You, you know, you, you have to you have to analyse and watch. I mean, luckily enough, at, at this day and age, I mean, we've got video cameras and we've got footage of, of of everybody really. So if you're looking to face someone who's a little bit of a mystery bowler, then you would sit in front of that television and you watch and watch and watch and watch and, and until you think that you've just seen enough of his clues. That is going to give you give you that little bit of a, a little bit of a, a head start. I still think that all right, you've picked it, but you've still got to play. And and whilst whilst picking it does make it easy or easier, you know, against someone who knows what they're doing, you've still got to then play the shot. And and as I say, I, I, I'm not a great person to sort of stand here and, and talk about that because I never really had to do it. So um, you know, someone who had to face Shane Warne, um, probably my, my nephew Mark might be a good one too, because <laughs> he, he had to face him and, and, and I, I never that great, Is that great in, in, innings out heading league? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and that's, that's, been, that's been sort of uh, on the television a lot, obviously with the, with the Ashes last summer. Um, so, but, but if you can, if you can pick it from the hand, then absolutely brilliant. But there are other ways you can, you know, you can watch the seam, you can, you can try and pick it from pick it from the, uh, from the, from after it's pitched. But if you're doing it that way, you're leaving yourself a little bit less time to actually look to see where you're gonna score.
So and if the ball's pitched up, you obviously want to look to to go forward. Yeah, you're going to look to try and you're going to look to try and drive, and, and very importantly is making sure that that the, the forehead the head is going towards the ball. One thing I talk about with um, with boys is making sure not just not just talk about your head going towards the ball, but try and really isolate one part. So some people talk about the nose going towards the ball, some people talk about the eyes going towards the ball. I tend to look at my my forehead. I try and get the, the boys, you know, trying to get the players to to go at the ball with the forehead. The reason being is that I think that I mean our left ear is very if we're a right-handed batter, our left ear is obviously very much part of our head but if my left ear goes towards a ball my head now is just slightly outside the line of my body and I feel as though that's taking the weight that that way whereas if we actually turn and now get our forehead going towards the ball now now our our head is in line with our body and we're not we're not falling over so when you, when when the word head towards the ball is mentioned I would I would sort of make sure that, that my players are, are, are thinking forehead as opposed to the head as, as, a, as a general object and the, with the advent of um, DRS, I know um, a few years ago you'd almost you know try and pad away um, the spinner, like get on the front foot, and you wouldn't really be given out LBW, but you're bat and pad together. Mm -hmm. uh, but now um, that seems to have changed with uh, with the advent of the uh, DRS, yeah. and you have to play more in front. Yeah. Um, how does that change from a skill set uh, as a batsman? Play more out in front. Obviously, you bring the close infielders in yep. further, but yeah, I mean, I, I, for some reason, I I always played out in front of in front of my pad. I, I was never a bat pad person because I I used to use my hands a lot. I wasn't one of those players that used to punch the spinners or whatever. I used to try and try and use my hands a little bit. And in order for me to do that, my bat needed to be slightly out in front of my pad to enable me to to uh, a, the ball to have access to me, but me to have access to the ball. Um, so I, I never really had had an issue with with even playing out in front of myself. I felt I negated these guys, the, the silly point in the short leg, more than if I played bat and pad together, because I could react to what the ball was doing. And what would your kind of release shot be for both uh, a fast bowler? and a spinner, would you have one? Or was it just a case of just each ball on its merits? You know, there's a lot said about, you know, rotating the strike, etc. Yep. Um, as you as a ex player and now a coach, um, how would you encourage, uh, you know, players currently and, and those coming up, you know? Again, spin, um, again, very much down to the individual. I wasn't, I wasn't brilliant at going over the top but I used to use my feet in order to let the bowler know that I was, I was able to do it. But I tended to sort of come down, the, come down the wicket with the intention of scoring somewhere, getting my head, as I say, forehead over the ball and working the ball into a gap somewhere. If then the ball was perfectly in the area where I felt confident going over the top, then I, then I would go. Other batters might want to come down the wicket with the, with the intention of going big to start with um, and that, that can be their get out shot you know, as coming down the wicket. The other, the, other alternative, the other thing about that is the fact that if you go over the top a couple of times you can more often than not get your mid off and mid on back and then your singles become easier. I was more sweep. I was going to say the sweep, sweep shot. shot that, that, was, that was a shot that I played, played a lot of. Is um, it fair to say that if you can't pick which way the ball's spinning, is a sweep the safest option? Could be. Yeah, it could be. But you also have to learn whether you're a line sweeper or a length sweeper. And by, the, by that I mean some, some people will only sweep on, on line and it has to be sort of that, if it's an off spinner, that middle and leg area turning, turning into your pad, hopefully ball going down leg side. Other people would sweep off length, so it didn't matter what the line was, they were going to sweep as long as that ball was in that, that length that they felt comfortable sweeping, then they had the options of either going sort of slog sweep, more conventional sweep, um, and then going sort of finer with a, with a little, little nudge down there. Um, so once you've worked out whether, whether you are that line sweeper or, or, or length sweeper, 
then you know that that can be a real good get out shot if you've got a bowler that's sort of, you know, sort of tying you down a little bit and again as you say that that rotation and then you said you've got 100 at Lords, you've gone big at the home of cricket. How would you, what advice would you give um, again to, to, f to future players coming up about, you know, going on, don't be satisfied with the 50, go on and get the big 100. Is it again a mindset thing, a fitness, fitness thing or a combination of everything? I think it's a combination of everything, but the, the, the first thing is a desire to want to, to, want to do that. Um, the desire, first of all, to get get yourself into that sort of 10, 20. As an opening batter, I, I, I didn't mind so much getting a single figure score because there was a lot of really top draw bowlers out there who were a bit more than capable of bowling me a good ball. What bothered me more is if I got to 25, 30 and then got out because I felt as if I'd got in at that point. Um, obviously, bowlers still capable of bowling you a good ball, even if you got to 25, 30. But you, you would feel as if you were more than and, and capable of going on to get the 50, and then from 50 on to 100. So the desire to want to do it is there. Yeah, fitness uh, is obviously another one, especially on hot days in the summer. Um, but, but also not, not sort of thinking about having to score a boundary every over. And I think sometimes that in, in, in today's cricket with the white with the, with the sort of the, the white ball game, a lot of batters will have a tendency of looking at strike rates, looking at looking at scoring a boundary, taking the attack to the opposition. You, you keep hearing these words bandied around, and um, and in certain certain parts of four day cricket, five day cricket, you don't you don't have to do that. And, and, I, and I think that the understanding, the mindset of, of allowing, if the bowler's bowling well, you know, just make sure that you see him off at some point, he's going to have to come off and someone else will come on. Sometimes taking the attack to a bowler that's bowling well can put, you, put your side in trouble. So it's, it's, it's about sort of taking stock of, of everything that's going on, the bowler, the pitch, the conditions, match situation, and working out the best way for you to score runs for yourself, which in turn is obviously going to help help your team in the process. Ian Butcher, thank you very much. No problem, thank you.